Uh, Groucho, Priscilla Larson and George Finfrock are standing by to talk to you. So folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. How are you? 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 Fine. Fine, how are you? Does it sound like Arthur Godfrey? <laughs> now then, uh, Priscilla Larson, that's you, uh, I that's presume. Me. And you're uh, George uh, Finrock. Finfrock. Finfrock, huh? Yes, sir. Finfrock, Finfrock. You know that name sounds like something out of T.S. Eliot? <laughs> Have you got a job, George? Yes, sir. I retired from my job. You retired from it? Yes, sir. Well, then you haven't got a job, huh? What did you do before you quit? Uh, I was a rural mail carrier for 45 years. You were a what? A rural mail carrier for 45 years. You carry the mail for 45 years? Yes, sir. Didn't you ever deliver it? <laughs> <laughs> well, some of it every day. Do you know that the female is deadlier than the male? Kipling said that one night when he was talking to T.S. Eliot. <laughs> How old are you, uh, Priscilla? 19. You're very young and you're very pretty, too. Thank you. Are you married? No, I'm happy. <laughs> Have you got a steady boyfriend? No, not a steady one. Just boyfriend. Mm. Where do you go on your dates with your boyfriends? Do you like drive-in movies? No, I don't like drive-ins. I like walk-in movies because when I go well, to the movies, I go to see the picture. <laughs> Well, why don't you see the movie in the drive-in? Well, have you ever been to a drive-in? <laughs> I mean, you, well, why not? What, uh, what's the difference between watching a picture in a drive-in and in a regular theater? I don't know. Well, let me see. Probably when you were young, they didn't have... Well, maybe they had drive-ins. I don't know. They didn't have movies when I was young. Yes, they did, I'm sure. No, they you. didn't. So you probably went to Inspiration Point or something like that. It's the same thing, only there's a movie in front of you and you pay to get in. And what's the difference with a drive-in? That's a drive-in. Like Inspiration Point. Well, why don't you want to go to a drive-in? Because I don't want to sit there and just make out. I want to watch the movie. Well, what is the distraction? The guy. <laughs> you mean he, in, he distracts you from looking at the movie? Well, he tries to. What does he do? <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you do when you take a girl to a drive-in movie? <laughs> what do I do when I take a girl to a drive-in movie? Yeah. <laughs> I usually uh, half asleep by the time I'm driving through there. Well, that would be the kind to go with then. <laughs> Pop things were, must have been a lot duller in your day, weren't they? No cars to run out of gas, no drive-in movies, no TV. How'd you ever get to know a girl? Well, you know, we had the horse and buggy in those days, and we didn't have to go four and, and like we do in the cars nowadays, they go four together. Not back in the horse and buggy days, well, it was just two couples. Just one couple went out. Well, how did sparking in your day compare with sparking today, you rascal? Well, sparking, is that what you used to call it? Yeah. Smooching or Smooching, necking? Or? I don't know what they call it today, but there's a lot more of it today than there was then. <laughs> what do you call it today, uh, Priscilla? Making out. <laughs> making out what? Just making out, just like, you know, necking. Same thing, oh. different word. Well, how are you so uh, sure of what's going on in the, the world of today's youngsters? Uh, I had eight children. Eight children? Uh, boy, did you get fooled. You thought you were taking her for a buggy ride. <laughs> How long have you been married, George? Fifty-one years. We celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary a year ago last August. Uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> Priscilla, how about you? Have you ever given any thoughts to marriage? Well, not really. I think I'll get married when I'm about 26. 26, huh? That's seven years away now. How can you be sure you'll get married when you're 26? Well, this astrologer told me I was going to get married when I was about 26. He told me lots of things. Uh, what else did the stargazer tell you? Well, he told me I was a Capricorn and not to marry a Sagittarius boy because he'd be too Not stingy. to marry a what? A Sagittarius boy. A Sagittarius? I thought that was a vegetable. <laughs> Because he'd be stingy and what I'd else want did money. Faker tell you? And he told me not to marry a Taurus boy because I had Taurus risings and we'd you the know, what? fight what all kind of a boy? Taurus the bull. Taurus the bull? Yes, because I. You were getting plenty of that from him, weren't you? <laughs> oh, no, it was fun going to them, really. I think so. Now, what about you, Joe? What would George be? Uh, I don't know. When how do you feel about this? Uh, what she just well, said? I think that's all bunk. <laughs> 
towards you straight in the shoulder, huh? You don't believe in any of this, huh? No, sir. Priscilla, don't pay any attention to him. He was born under the sign of the crab. <laughs> That's cancer. Oh, I can't get along with them. <laughs> when is your birthday, uh, Pop? June the 18th. Uh, what's the dope on him, then? He'd be Gemini. He's probably musical. He's a Gemini? Yeah. What is he, East Gemini or West Gemini? No, Gemini, the twins. Ge he's twins? Yeah. Oh, well, he pretty well, near inside, is, huh? Inside, inside, you know, you can't... Inside, you you have another fella inside of you that you don't know... Yes, and they're always fighting... That you don't know anything each... about, uh, George. Yes, and... yeah, she just told me about it. Yeah. And they're always fighting about, with each other. You know, one day he's going to go here, but then he doesn't go there. He goes someplace else instead. Uh, are you... He's always moving around and... Everything like that. What, what, does he have any talents? Yeah, they're, they're musical. Music? Are you musical? Or? Well, I used to play a snare drum in the Fife and Drum Corps back in Waynesville. <laughs> <laughs> now, Priscilla, what else does a Gemini have to offer? They can never make up their mind. They never stay in one place. Well, is this true of you, Dad? Are you restless? Are you always moving around? Well, I couldn't hardly say that because I'm living in the house I was born in 73 years ago. <laughs> Get around the forge a little bit. See, he travels a lot. Uh, that makes sense. And uh, how long have you had your same job? <laughs> Forty-five years. And you've been married to the same woman for how long? Fifty-one. He's just got something George, else. George, there's something I want to know. When are you going to quit playing around and settle down? <laughs> well, I'd like to continue this conversation, but time is running out, and we've got to get on with the quiz. Now, Mr. Fenneman, uh, could we have the questions, please, George? What category did they choose, George? Uh, American history, right? Right. American history, all right, Priscilla. Uh, you part of American history with that name. You pick the first one. Oh, you get yes. it. <laughs> You're starting with $100? Yeah. Which was the first foreign power to recognize the United States? France. La Belle France is right. Oh, you're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> and you now have uh, $100 and three more chances to make... We have to make a total of $500. Okay, well, we're going to take another 100 one, and then we're going to take $200. All right, there's another 100. I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> For $100, in 1869, the East and West were linked by rail at an historic meeting point. In what state was this? Where did the East and West meet? If you don't know, guess. Okay. Colorado? No, it was Utah. Oh, well, that was close enough. Okay. Well, you have two, two more chances to win $500. That's exactly what I was going to say. A $200 one. Okay. For $200, in 1900, who saved as United States minister to France during the American Revolution? Now, you ought to know that. It's in all the history books. Even when you're in grammar school. Read it again, please. Who saved as United States Minister to France during the American Revolution? Very famous man. You don't know, guess. Uh, time is up. I'm surprised at you, George. Benjamin Franklin. Oh. Oh. Well, myself. you have uh, one more chance. Uh, you have one hundred dollars. No, it won't do any good. It uh, won't. Which we take? hundred. Take another two. Another two. Uh, I should have known that one. Oh well. For two hundred dollars, the second city to save as the nation's capital was then the largest city in the union. What was it? The second city to save as the nation's capital was then the largest city in the union. What was it? It was in the early days of the... New York? So, it's Philadelphia. Oh, oh. Benjamin Franklin. Uh, George, I guess you've been out of uh, school so long you've forgotten all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I'm sorry you didn't win more. How much did they win? A uh, hundred dollars. I'm going to give you one more question. If you don't get this right, I'll kill you. <laughs> For a hundred dollars, who is buried in Grant's tomb? Grant. Grant is absolutely right. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so you've each won $100, and thanks Thank for you. coming down here. You're a real cute couple. Thank you. Sorry you didn't win more. Okay. See you later. Go, man, go. Uh, Groucho, uh, uh, Toby Lowenstein and uh, George Wood are standing by to talk to you. Uh, Toby is representing Asbury Park, New Jersey, in our Mrs. Housing Development Contest. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to No Man's Land. Uh, 
Say the secret word and you'll divide an extra $100 in color. <laughs> Toby Lowenstein and George Wood, eh? And Toby, you're, you're from uh, Asbury Park? Yes. New Jersey, yes. huh? That's my old stamping ground, you know. For three years in a row, the police there elected me the man most likely to get arrested for vagrancy. <laughs> Uh, I really have uh, very fond memories of Asbury Park. That's the first time I ever kissed a girl. I was 38 years old. <laughs> Tell me, has uh, Asbury Park changed much in the uh, last uh, century? No, not very much. You'd recognize it. Uh, well, they'd have trouble recognizing me, I think. You know, when I get up in the morning and look in the mirror, it doesn't seem possible that this is the face that drove so many women mad. <laughs> look at it and it, I can't believe it's me. I keep looking in back of me and see if there's somebody standing in back of me. But there's nobody there, so I finally conclude that this is me. Well, since you're in our contest for Pretty Young Housewives, I assume you have a husband. Yes, what, I what do. What kind of, I'm sorry to hear that, what kind of work does, <laughs> kind of work does he do? He's a dentist in Asbury Park. He's a dentist in Asbury yes. Park. Is that anything like a ball player in uh, Philadelphia? Well, it's not like a ball player, but he'd love to be a ball player. <laughs> that kind of work pays well these days, doesn't it? Dentistry, it's a tough grind, but if you just keep drilling deep enough. Like... <laughs> do you have any children, Toby? Yes, I do. I have two little girls. Uh -huh. uh, how long have you been married? We've been married four years. Is your family complete, or would you like to have more children? I'd love to have more. I'd like a large family, and I'd love to have a little boy. You know, I have some advice for you. <laughs> if you expect to reach your goal, we'll have to forget your husband is a dentist. You're certainly going to have to see him more than twice a year. <laughs> <laughs> and you are, uh, you're George Wood, huh? Right. Where is your home, George? Well, I'm originally from uh, St. Louis, but I was born in Bender, Arkansas. Do you have a job, uh, George? Yes, I'm a television cameraman here in Hollywood. Oh, are you a, a cameraman on, on this show? Oh, no, I'm at the local station here in Hollywood. Oh. What's the most interesting show you've covered with your camera? Well, I uh, shot uh, Khrushchev when he was here in Los Angeles. <laughs> You shot Cruz? Yes. Uh, must be a terrible shot. How could anybody miss it? <laughs> How'd you get along with uh, with Cruci? I was actually I was in more than Khrushchev. I was interested in watching the movie stars. I was watching, uh, for instance, Marilyn Monroe was there. Uh, watch her walk around, which is worth the trip right there. Did you? And, uh, <laughs> Did you shoot Marilyn Monroe? Uh, yes. At times we would uh, pick up different shots of the uh, movie uh -huh. stars. She glanced up once and she saw me standing there by the camera. And, and did uh, you get that old feeling? Yes, well, our eyes met just sort of in a moment of madness there, uh -huh. you know. And, uh, <laughs> and what'd you do, drop your camera? No. <laughs> Are you married? Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And does your wife know about this uh, affair with Marilyn Monroe? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> and she's I not, tell her all. Uh, she's not jealous? No. Well, how does a cameraman spend his time when he's not working? Is uh, photography your hobby? Uh, no, I have a hobby of uh, uh, writing and singing uh, what I call modern folk songs about modern people and events. You sing? Uh, is that the same as hillbilly music, folk songs? Uh, no, no. This is uh, it's about uh, up-to-date uh, subjects, but uh, it's in strictly a folk song style, which uh -huh. is old time. Well, uh, could you give us an illustration of what you're... Uh... Uh, yes, uh, can I get my, my guitar? Where do you have it, in the hop shop? I'm not backstage. Oh. <laughs> you go ahead and get your guitar, and I'll talk to this kid All from right, Asbury right. Park. Mm -hmm. Now, you say you're married and you have children, huh? Right, I have two little girls. Two little girls, and, and now you want a, a much larger family with a boy in between, is that it? <laughs> As a part of it, yes. Uh -huh. how, many, how many children do you have, uh, Two. Two, huh? She's going to have six. Would you like a couple of hers? <laughs> <laughs> she could give you the surplus because... <laughs> Well, give us an example of the modern folk song, yeah? This is a, I call it Song of a Modern Minstrel. Uh-huh. You call it that? Yes. When did you decide on that title? Oh, just when I wrote it. Uh, it's a lovely title. <laughs> well, go ahead. All right. Let's hear it. I'm all a flutter. <laughs> I'll sing Are you interested in this? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's a solo. Fire, fire away. <laughs> 
May I? Yes, go oh, ahead. I'll sing you a song of the present day, a ballad that's not very old. For I am a minstrel who comes your way, and I have some tales to be told. For this is an age of shoes and ships, of seating wax and cars, of hula hoops and trampolines and rock and roll guitars. I'll sing you a song of big summit talks where never is spoken a word. A plane called U2 seems to lose all its glue and its crash is the biggest you've heard. Where coos chop tours around our land with easy self plum, then sends his regrets amongst his threats and rattles his atom bomb. That was very good. I like that. Huh? <laughs> You have a very pretty voice, George. Well, too. thank you. Thank like you. A lot of music in your voice here. And you play very well. Could you uh, sing us another song? I mean, uh, a shorter one? Yes. Uh, well, I have a song uh, I write about modern people, Groucho, and you are certainly one of the characters of our time. So I wrote a song about you. I uh, call it... Uh, I didn't know you regarded me as a character. <laughs> I, I always thought I had great dignity and aplomb. As a matter of fact, I had an aplomb for dinner tonight. Oh. <laughs> Still the plums, I am. <laughs> All right, you gonna sing another song? Yes, it's called The Ballad of Groucho. Oh, well, this is a different title than the other song. Yes, it's a different title. All right, well, let's, let's have right. it. Then. I will tell you of a man loved by one and all. Man and beast and flocks and fleece love his name to call. Even little animals like squirrels in all our parks stand as glued and buy their food. Nuts to Groucho Marx. Yes, nuts to Groucho Marx. Modern man will soon explore the center of the earth. A man renowned will drop way down to look inside its girth. And when they ask one volunteer this journey to embark, I'll stand up stout, his name I'll shout, down oh, with Groucho Marx. Yes, down with Groucho <laughs> Marx. It's a great tribute to me, this song. Thank you. Thank you. Every bird that's in the sky sings of Groucho's praise. 10,000 strong, they sing their song, a bird type Marseillaise. I dread the next line. The sky is filled with feathered friends, sparrows, quail, and larks. Their wings did wave, and then they gave the bird to Groucho Marx. Gave the bird to Groucho Marx. Gave the bird to Groucho Marx. Oh, there's more. <laughs> to show those men who've yet to come just how we've lived and died. We'll strongly tool a time capsule and seal a man inside. We'll place him there midst rolling drums, cannon fire and sparks. The crowd will roar, we'll bolt the door. Oh, nuts to Groucho Marx. <laughs> and shut up, Groucho Marx. <laughs> God, you should make a recording of that song. <laughs> it's true, you sell a million copies. <laughs> yes, you would. I know, because I'd buy every one. <laughs> take them right out from the street and hit them with a hammer. <laughs> it's very good. You have a very sweet voice, and you play very well, and it's good lyrics, too. Did Thank you write the whole thing? Yes. Words, music, and everything, huh? And you ought to go and marry a dentist. Huh? <laughs> well, you're a charming couple, and it's been fun talking to you. Uh, Toby, you know our judges want to see you in a bathing suit yeah. before you leave here, so you'll be thinking about it a little <laughs> later, and I'll be thinking about it right now. Hey, nuts to Groucho Marx. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> you haven't got one about Panama, have you? No, I don't. <laughs> and I hope you win a lot of money. What tonight, category so. did they choose? Uh, professions of famous people. Oh, nuts to Groucho Marx. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shall we pick one? Yeah, see. <laughs> Either professions of famous people. Yes. Uh, Whatever you want. Four chances to make a total of five hundred dollars. And there's the first one for three hundred. These are tougher than the others, you understand. Yes. For three hundred dollars, what is George Balanchine's profession? B-A-L-A-N-C-H-I-N-E-S. George Balanchine. If you don't know, guess. Oh, that's too much. <laughs> Come on, time's up, kids. Okay. Take a guess. Uh, we'll say sports it's a guess. No, it's choreographer. Very famous. Well, you still have three more chances to make a total of five. All right, we'll go for the smaller one. 
You start with another hundred dollars. You don't yeah. like me, do you? Yes, I do. But why did you write a song like that with uh, all those insults? Well, I knew a great comedian like yourself, God, so would see the humor in it. <laughs> you know, but I didn't. <laughs> what was Diego Rivera's profession? For one hundred dollars, Diego Rivera's profession. Painter. Painter is right. You now have one hundred dollars. Two more chances to make a total of five hundred dollars. Two hundred. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> There's 200. Mm. What is Willie Brandt's profession? B R A N D T S. Willie Brandt. Willie Brandt. Willie Brandt. I know that name. Take a guess if you don't know. Okay. Press sports again. He's the mayor of West Berlin. Of course. Politician. Well, uh, you have one more chance, and I don't think you're going to make $500. No. Uh, so, take what? Take a small one. <laughs> sure. Take a small one. All right. For $100, what was Amos Alonzo Stagg's profession? Coach. A football coach. That's good enough. Yeah. So you wind up with $200, which means, of course, that we won't see you a little later in the show. Well, I'm sorry. You sang so beautifully, and I'm sorry you didn't win more. Right. But Bye. we'll see you later. You're going to come back later with a bathing suit on, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay.